Shalom Israya, Reach Daiwi Israya. Greetings and the blessed assurance of the name of Yoshua Hamashiach to call all Israya, the elect, according to his tender kindness, his mercies, that Yah has elected us as a nation of people to represent his authoritative matter in all of our actions and our deeds. This is a teaching which is titled Determining the Sign, Signs of the Mo'adim, the Feast Days of Almighty Yahweh. We must understand, Yisraya, that everything that Yah speaks unto his people, it is a definitive. It is the final answer that has been supplied by his authoritative nature. And uh, there is no need to evaluate it to bring about some kind of solution. It is already unreprovable. There is no doubt at all according to what he has commanded and instructed us. It is the most authoritative, most reliable. It is the complete answer to all things whereby he has instructed us as a nation of people to walk in. And that is something that is uh, and has created a tremendous diversity among those that are called his elect. And that is what is the determinate sign, or how do we determine the time of the seasons of Almighty Yahweh and Yahshua HaMashiach? I do hope to shed some light on that in this teaching that will strengthen, edify, and cause your knowledge to be increased in the, in the wisdom and understanding of what Yah has commanded Yisraeah. It is vitally important that Shaul, as he speaks unto Timothy, he said that we are a people that's ever learning, or lamads. We are a people that is forever being taught. We are forever exercising ourselves and what we believe to be right. And he said that we are never or low incapable, never able low, to be able to come or enter in into the da'at, the power to discern the wisdom of Yah's discernment, the knowledge of Yah's iman, the understanding, the wisdom of Torah. We do not have that ability. We are always learning lomads. We are teaching and we are exercising ourselves in all kinds of disciplines of doctrines that never produce the essence of the power of Almighty Yahweh. And that is what I want to shed light on today, determining the sign of the seasons that we may know the precise time of the Mo'ed, the Mo'adim, the feast, the feast days of Almighty Yahweh. Yah has given us one of the most prominent signs, and I want to begin there in the book of Shema, in the book of Exodus. It quotes unto us Exodus chapter 31, and verse 16 and 17. Yah instructs us by the commands of his mighty messenger, Moshe. Therefore the children of Yisrael, he said, they shall keep Chav Shabbat, we shall keep the Shabbat, and we shall observe, or we shall asa. We shall do what Yah commands us in Hashabat. We must fashion ourselves according to the statutes, the ordinance of Hashabat, and we shall do or we shall observe the Shabbat. He said, throughout all of our generations, we shall uh, observe the Shabbat, uh, for it is a perpetual brits. It is a continuous covenant unto Yisrael. It is simply that it is Ulam Vi'at, Ulam Vi'at Brit. It is a covenant that has no ceasing. It has no, uh, no way of escape in the sense that we can never cease from keeping Hashem. And he says in verse 17 of Shema 31, verse 16, 
He said, and it shall be an uh, it shall be a sign, it shall be an ensign, it shall be uh, a as a flag, it shall be something that continuous remind us that we are Yisraya. It shall be a sign between Yasses me and the children of Yisraya forever. Olam viat. It is without ceasing. It is perpetual. It has no limitation to time or season. But the Shabbat of Yah, it is a perpetual sign between Yisraya and our Abba forever. For in six days, Yah made Hashemayam an Olam, and on the seventh day, Yah simply Shobah, he rested. And this is an Uth, the Shabbat, between Yisraya and Almighty Yahweh. He says that he Shobuth, and not only that, and he was Nafash, he was refreshed. In essence, he took a breath and said, My, the creation, it is splendid, it is excellent, it is beautiful. And so he breathed in the breath of the mighty creation that he had created for us, Yisrael. There is a scripture in Torah that is one of the most prominent identities or identifiers as to when we as a nation began to count began to observe the Mo'adim, the Mo'ad, as we have one that is hasting upon us, and that is the Mo'ad and the Mo'adim of Pesach and Hamatzvah, the Feast of Passover, and also the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It is vitally important, it is an essential, that we know how to determine the time, the season, what shall the sign be? If there is no visible cognate sign, how do you know what you're doing? If you miss the sign, then there is nothing that connects you to the Most High. And that is what the Shabbat is. It is a sign. It is an Uth between Yisraya and Yah, and it is an identifier that we are the people, the elect of Almighty Yahweh. But there is a particular verse, I want to begin there, because it is one thing that we do not have uh, uh, understanding and clear understanding of word definition, we will lose the whole scope of the matter. I want to define, according to the, the uh, Merriam-Webster dictionary, the word what a definitive is. A definitive is this. In the archaic or the Hebraic meaning, it would mean it is fixed and unalterable in opinion or judgment. It cannot be altered in any way. It cannot be self-assessed that one takes what Yah says, a word, and then in their own determination, in their self-assessing of that word, they give definitive or meaning to it. Yah speaks in a language to us uh, that it is a definitive, a definitive according to the Merriam-Webster, volume 6. It serves to supply a final answer, solution, or evaluation, and to end an unsettled, unresolved condition. That's what a definitive is. It gives us uh, a definite that cannot be altered. It cannot uh, be questioned. It is settled. And when Yah commanded us to Shema, to observe, keep, guard, take heed unto his Mo'adim, he gave us a definitive. He gave us a sign that is unmatched, that cannot be dissolved. And that is, he gave us the Yare. He gave us the Yare, the moon, which is important for Yisraya in the seasons of Yah. I want you, Yisraya, to take note of what verses in Scripture I will use. I want to speak simple in this teaching uh, that you may understand and that you may know what is vitally important in this hour. I want to begin in the book of uh, uh, Tehillim, Psalms 81, 
and verse 3. This is the basics of how many believe that they truly believe that Dai we talks about here in Tehillim, 81 verse 3, that there is no visitation or no visit of the moon, and that he determined where he was in the darkness of the moon that this was the day to be God. It cannot operate that way, and I will seek to prove that to you with uh, any doubt that has, uh, has battled in your mind that we will bring a final resolution to this matter. Hear this clearly. It says in the book of Tehillim, Psalms 81 verse 3, Yah says, I want you to tacha, I want you to blow, bless, make a sound that is fervent, a sound that can be heard throughout Yerushalayim and the cities around. He said, I want you to blow the shofar, he says, in the chodash, in the month, in the season, in the time. On the first day, he says, I want you to blow the shofar in the month, the chodash, in the fullness, we must understand this, in the keshef, in the keshef, in the full moon of a pointy time of our chag. I want you to blow, to make an alarming sound, and he uses the word Kesef in the full moon of the appointed time of our Ha. You're commanded for this shall be a hook. This is a prescribed task. This is the will of Yah for Yisraeliah and a Torah of Yah unto Yahub. He's commanded to blow the shofar in the Kesef in the time of the full moon. I will ask myself the question as I ask you. So Yah commands David this instruction that he is commanded to do. Is it anywhere in the Torah, in the writings of the Novi, or the Novi in the prophets, the messengers of Yah, whereby David speaks of this account as to a time that he recognizes uh, the Keshef, the fullness of the moon of Yah, when it has begun to wane. Is there anywhere in the teaching of Torah and the writings of the uh, Navi'im, the prophets, uh, whereby we can have uh, some kind of resolution uh, as to the speech of Dawid? I'm certain that it is, and I want to direct our attention to that at this time. In the book of 1 uh, Shemuel, 1 Samuel. Let us read this account in 1 Samuel. I want to read in chapter 20 and verse 24. Now, I read the definitive or the meaning, the definition of the word definitive. When there is a definitive. When there is an absolute, it cannot be altered, it cannot be questioned. There is nothing that one can add, subtract to that definitive. Here is a defining moment for Dawid. As he understood the preparation as Yah speaks in volume unto his bosom here in Tehillim. Here in the book of Shemuel, the experience that Dawid had in this, uh, this assault as Shaul sought to overtake him because he was the anointed one unto Yisrael. He speaks of this account, 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 24. It says here, listen carefully, Yisraya, it is final that we learn how to shemach, to hear. It says, so Dawid, he sat down, he hid himself, he made himself conceal, he did not make himself so obvious unto Shaul, Dawid, he concealed himself, it says, in a sodith, in a field in a bemitz bar, in a wilderness. And it says here, it is vital to understand this. Hear this, Yisraya, 1 Samuel, chapter 20, verse 24. And when the, carefully, when the Chodash, the new 
moon was, and this is the catalyst here. There are many that will see the Chodesh, and they know that the Chodesh refers to the first day in which the crescent appears, but there are many that doubt that. And what they look at, they look at when there is an invisible moon, where there is no sign, it is no oath unto Yisra'ya. This is the catalyst. It is not as much as the Chodesh or the new moon, the, the time of the season of the new moon. And that is something that has always stunted me. How is it that there is no sign of the time of the season, and yet there are those that determine that this is when the proper time of Yah's season and time began? It doesn't equate, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't register spiritual, spiritually. And the reason why is because we are a nation of people, we understand, as Shaul says, we are ever lamad. We're always being taught, we're always exercising ourselves in certain kinds of disciplines and wisdoms of the Torah, but we are never low, it is incapable, it cannot be, it will never be, never able to come to the da'ats, the ability of the Torah to discern times, seasons, what is of Yah, will never able to come to the da'at, or come is to go, to enter in. To enter in, we're ne never able to enter in uh, into the knowledge of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Now that's what Shaul says. I want to read this again in First Shemuel. It is vital that I read it. There must be accountability of this according to uh, the writings uh, uh, of the uh, Navim, the prophets, the writing uh, in scripture, literature, it must be Yisra'ah. If there is no visibility of a sign, there is no sign. There is no sign if there is no visibility. Again, in the book of First Shemuel, the writings, uh, the wisdom, the principles of Yah reveal uh, Unto this mighty messenger, this prophet of Yah, he speaks a God. First Samuel 2024. 20, As I stated in the beginning, we are a people that define words according to our social environmental structure. And when the linguists design created a word, for it to be applicable in a certain definitive, then we define it according to our perception, understanding, and how we deduct from a matter that is uh, that is understandable to us. But that's not how it works, Israel. Every word of Yah is pure, isn't that so? So if every word is pure, let us examine this in First Samuel, First Shemuel, Shemuel, chapter twenty, verse twenty-four. It tells us that David, he sota, he hid, he concealed himself, he made himself invisible, that nothing but the darkness of the night would appear upon him. He hid himself in the sodith, he hid himself in a field. We understand what a field is. We have properties here in textual community, we have fields, and when there is a field, there is an opening to the skyline. You can see the visibility of the stars, the moon, the sun, and also we have wooded areas, whereby it is wooded, and it's quite difficult if you're down below the trees to see up and look at anything visible in the sky, but in the sadith, in the field, the sky is opened, uh, and he hid himself under the arm of Yah in the midst of this tremendous field. And it says this, and when? So something when had to appear or happen. Well, it's not so, my friend. Well, let's continue as we shall define and bring about definitive of the word meaning. It says, uh, and when the Chodesh, or the appearing of the first day of Yah's uh, 
month when the Hodesh, the first or the new month, was come. Now that's the catalyst, that one word, come. Chaya. Chaya. The king sat down to eat meat. That when Shaul sat down to eat meat, to give reverence. The catalyst of this whole application is the word Chaya. Chaya. The word Chodash, it implies that the first day of Yah, or the first day of Yah's new moon, it begins with the crescent reappearing. When we see the crescent, or the moon begins to wane. I will show us that as I proceed. I want to ask us the question, Yisrael, what was the determining factor unto Dawid that he knew that he was in the season of Yah's time of his Chodesh? And how did this writer, how did he know that it was the Chodesh? How did he know that it was the Chodesh? The Chodesh. How did he know Yisrael? Was there nothing there to give him sense of the season and the time? Or he just determined that in this open field there was no sign. Yah has put the luminary bodies of the heavens above to be signs unto Yisrael. So we are saying that there was no sign there, that he sat in utter darkness. He was in darkness and all of a sudden he began to, to see the, the, the slither, the waning of that light. And he knew that he was in the season of Yah. I will try with all the essence that Yah has supplied unto me to try and prove that in the writings of the book. Again, again, we look at one of the most profound catalysts in this verse here, and that is the word when the month was come. When someone knocks at your door, it's dark, you don't know who that person is. And so you say, come. And when they come in, then it appears light shines upon them, and then you are aware. We must understand the word Chaya. Chaya. And when the month was Chaya, the king sat down, the Melech sat down to eat his lechan. We must understand here in this Katuv, I want to emphasize this word, Haya. And if we define it according to the Hebrew expression, the word Haya, as Yah says unto Moshe, when they ask, Who am I? Who has sent you? Yah says, Tell them, Haya, Haya. Tell them that I have arisen. Let me define the words uh, Haya according uh, to its Hebraic roots. Haya, this word uh, is defined by to rise, to appear, come about, to come to pass, to become, to occur, to come to pass, to be. Now, how is that a sign? It says when the, when the Chodash, when the Chodash had come, when it had appeared, when it had come, when it was recognizable, uh, the king knew, uh, and Dawi knew that that was the time of the season, even as he writes, as he utters unto us there in Tehillim Psalms 81 verse 3, Blow you the shofar in the Chodesh, the first day in the fullness, in the Keshef, of the appointed time of our Hag, in our feast time, in the time of the season. David had an experience, and he knew. And the word Haya is more than we have deduct in its definitive as to what it means, Yisraya. It is to be in existence. Now, if something is hid from you, how do you know that it is in existence? You don't see it. There is no visible 
trait or sign of its visibility. How do you know, Yisraya? How do you know to begin to set the shofar to your mouth? I want to assist us in that area. I want to help us much in that area. It is one thing that we must understand the verb haya in the Hebraic expression. It can be used, and it is used, one of the most vital essence of haya. That's why Yah says, tell them that I am haya. I am that I am. It emphasizes the presence of a person. It emphasizes the presence of a thing. That is what it emphasizes. It emphasizes the visibility. It can be seen literally with one's eyes. Am I expressing that Daiweed saw a sign in the heavens to know that it was the Chodash, the Chodash, the time of the first day of Yah's month? I am absolutely implying that. And I shall direct our attention to writings in the writings of Torah, the wisdom of, of Yah that shall assist and help us. I want to read this. I think it's vitally important in the book of Sharach, the wisdom of Sharach. It gives us a tremendous insight as to what Daiweed speaks here in Psalms 81, verse 3, and also in 1 Samuel 20, 24. I want to read this in the book of Sharach. Sharach 43 and verse 6. It says uh, that Yah, he made the Yareach, the Yare, the Yareach, the moon. Also, he made the moon for this purpose. To serve in its moed, in its season, in its appointed time, its appointed place, where Yah placed the moon for the meeting place. He says, to mark the times and to be an everlasting sign. That that is why Yah made the moon. That it would be a mark, it would be a, an oof unto Yisra'ah for the appointed season, appointed times, and the appointed place that we would know what to do. Hear this carefully here in Shirach 43.7. For the Yareach, the moon, comes the signs of the feast days. I will read that again. If you do not have the book of Shirach, I would advise you to purchase what many call the uh, Apocrypha. It is vital, the writings, uh, they are discernible, and you know that it is uh, the writings of Yah. Hear this carefully, Yisraeah, Shirach 43.7. From the Yareach, from the moon. This is what Yah speaks unto us, comes uh, the sign or the oath, the signs for the feast days. Carefully examine this now. It's a, a light, hear this, a light and or that wanes when it reaches the full. When the moon reaches the full, there is a light that wanes. Well, what is that, my friend? You are teaching us, but what is the evidence of that? I want to show you an example of what a waning moon is. If you can see this little chart here, you see this chart here. Do you see that? Do you see the be before the new moon, what we call the full moon? We see the waxing, the givens, the waxing of the moon. And immediately after what we call the full moon, we began to see the slither, what is called the waning here. That is the waning, that is the sign, that is what Daiweed saw. Because Shirach gives us a, a viable, visible expression as to what it is. Shirach says again, I want you to hear this, from... From the moon, the Yareach, comes the Uth for feast days. 
It is from the Yareh, the moon. The sign is given for the Moedim, the Moed, the feast or the feast days. He says uh, a light, a light and or a brilliant uh, 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 shining forth of the excellence of Yah's light. Uh, a light, he says, uh, that wanes, uh, that wanes uh, when it has reached the fall. Uh, this is how we know that it is the fall, uh, because the light begins uh, to wane. We don't know whether it is uh, on the 29th uh, and a half day or the 28th and a half day, uh, but we know the season begins uh, when we began to see the waning uh, of the moon, not the waxing of the moon, uh, not the waxing, but the waning of the moon. Uh, and the word is so precise here in Shirach 43 uh, and verse 7. Shirach 43 verse 7. Do you see the waning of the moon? You can find a chart like this uh, anywhere on the internet. You can find this. Not only that, I will make sure that it is up on our website so you can see this. This is the waning. Here is what we call the full moon when it's not visible. And yet this is the waning. This is the full moon when we know it is full when there is light is raya. Yeah, read that again for us, for our understanding and the excellence of our wisdom. Shirak says, from the moon, Shirak 43, 7, he tells us from the moon, from the moon, the Yareach, comes the sign for the feast days, a light that wanes when it reaches the full. You tell me that is what we wait for? Is that what thy weeds saw? Surely. Let us re-examine. If you have this writing of Shirak, let us re-examine first Shemuel, all right? I want to examine that again. First Shemuel, first Samuel, chapter 20, and verse 24. And David, he sota, he hid himself in the sodith, in the field. A field is not surrounded by trees. It is an open place. It is open. He hid himself, he concealed himself, and when the Chadosh, the Chodash, the Chodash, the new moon, was come, Chava, the king, sat down to eat. When the new moon was come, he said, it is time to relax. It is time because I know the season of Yah, this begins the month that Yah has commanded. And we must understand the importance of the month of Abib, the beginning of Yah's new year. Not the pagan celebration that the Goem celebrate, but the celebration of Yah's new year. So he hid himself when he saw the new moon was come. That is vital. I will deal with that momentarily, the words Haya. If something has come, it appears. You do not know unless there is an appearance, Yisraya. And there are those that will take Tehillim 81.3, and they will say, you see, it says the full moon or the month in its fullness. Well, they don't even understand the word Kesef. And they will say it means moon, but in this instant, uh, in the writings of the text, uh, it is the word kesa. It is the word when the moon is full. How do you know when the moon is full? Well, Shirak gives us that expression uh, again in Shirak 43, verse 7. From the moon, the Yarea, comes uh, the sign, the oath, of the feast days, a light that wanes when it reaches the full. It is a light that began to expose the beauty of the fullness of the moon. Again, I want to direct your attention to this chart that I have before you. We see the full moon here. It is invisible. This is what Shirak talks about here, the waiting. When there is a slither of light, you know that we are embarking upon 
We have entered in, it has higher, it has come, it is the sure sign for us more had to begin of counting the preparation. What was he in the open field for? You know, people don't even ask those questions because we have this scholarly generation that knows everything. This is the only generation that everyone here talks to. I find it nowhere in Torah unless they were messengers, elected men of Yah, whereby there was even an encounter with the Most High. And Yahshua sure did not speak to everyone. There were places that he, went, he did not even elaborate on anything with those individuals. But everyone today, Yah is talking to them. It's quite sad. But the Torah doesn't speak to them. Yah is talking to them, but yet there is no consensus there is no ikhab, no oneness uh, in their operation from the one uh, that Yah is talking to them. You have a group of men gathering and Yah has told all of them something. Shiraj speaks of this spirit. This is what Daiwi was in the field for. You cannot take one verse and take it out of text and began to establish a doctrine uh, according to my own ignorance of your own ignorance. That's not how it operates. We must have men that thoroughly search Torah, that they labor in the Torah, they lahad, they study intensely, they, 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 they deny themselves uh, that the Torah speaks of the power of Yahshua's testimony because he is the light that has come into the world. If he had not bow entered higher, then how will we know the sign of Yah? That your sure is the sign of Yah. It is our ignorance that speaks to us, and we don't want no one to correct us. Shirak says, when the moon, it is a gift from Yah for a sign for the feast days. He did not say it was a sign for the Shabbat. He said it was a sign for the feast days. It's amazing that you will find many of these that call themselves uh, Lunitarians or Lunar Shabbat keepers, and they are as deceived as they come. You've got one group that says, uh, without any determination, they don't even know when it's the full moon, uh, but they go by that sign when the darkness of the moon. You got another group that says you wait for the slither, and they don't wait for the slither. They mark the feast days or their what they call their Shabbats months and years in advance. How can that be? And yet they will debate where the one keeps uh, the Shabbat uh, as you and I would keep the Shabbat. They debate that. But that's not what Sharach says. Uh, he says that the moon. Uh, the Yareach, it is an Uth, a sign. It is the sign for what? For the feast days. The Mo'adim of Yah. And then he express an or a light that wanes. Without the waning of the light, my friends, you don't even know a light that wanes when it has reached. The, the light wanes when it has reached the full. You will know when the light rain or when it wanes, you have reached, the moon has reached the full. You will know only when it wanes. He goes on to say, in, the, in verse 8, the, moon, the, month, the month is named for the moon. Increasing, look at how he expressed this. Increasing marvelously in its phases. An instrument of the host on high shining forth in the fragments of Hashemaim. It is an instrument. But what is an instrument? It is a tool that is utilized. You use it. The moon is a tool and it increases marvelously in his faces. And Daiwi was waiting there in that field uh, to see the waning of the moon. And when he saw the waning of the moon, when he saw the light of the moon, uh, he knew that the season was upon him. And we as a nation, we as Yisrael, we must wait for the waning, the first visible sign. How does one know you're going to be one day behind all the time? 
That's why there is such diversity among those that call themselves Yisraya when it comes to determine your season. Because everyone is seeking his or her own. No one has the ears to shemach to hear what Yah commands. No one will receive the muzah, the instruction, the counsel, the discipline of Yah. This is an arrogant generation. It is haughty. It is a generation that is very ignorant, Yisraya. How do we as a nation determine the sign of the season for Yah's Mu'ad to begin? Continuing in this path, as I said to us, if you examine the words Chaya, which is utilized here in the book of First Shemuel, chapter 20, verse 24, when the month was Chaya, when the month was king, come the Melach that we, he sat down to eat meat. When the month was come, we must give some attention to the words Chaya. We must give some attention. Because that is the catalyst of everything that I am trying to convey unto you. Again, I want to read the definitive of Chaya in its Hebraic form of Yah's creation. Chaya is to rise, appear, come about, come to pass, to become, occur, come to pass, be, occur, be in existence. And one of the most powerful expressions of Haya, it is an expression, a verb that emphasizes the presence of a person. Moshe says, who should I tell them that has sent me? And Yah says, Haya, I have come, I have entered in. I have appeared. I am the one that has sent you. And it goes on to express here in First Shemuel 20, in verse 25. It says, And the king sat upon his seat, and at other times even upon a seat by the wall. And Yathan arose, and Amna sat by Shaul and Dawid's place was empty because he was in the field. He was in the field waiting on the sign from Yah. Nevertheless, Shaul spoke not anything that day, for he thought something has happened to thy wheat. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. And again, here in first, hear this, Yisrael. First, Shemuel, first Samuel 20, 27. And it came, Chaya, to pass on the next day. How did it come to pass? There was darkness and then light. And when the light appeared, we knew that it was the next day. He says, and it came to pass on the next day, which was the second day of the month. It was the second day of the month. Why was David in the field? He was waiting to see that slither. That was his hope, that slither of hope. As one would use the expression, uh, if you just have a slither of tikva of hope, just a small, small appearance of what we call inspiration. He knew it was the second day of the month, and Dawi place was empty, and Shaul said to Yochan, his son, why did not the son of Yeshia come to eat? Neither yesterday nor today. I want to give you a little assessment of historical law, content of the word Haya. We know that the name of Almighty Yahweh is used, Yah is used 6,500 times in the Torah. More than that in the expressive form of his character. But the Tanakh, it attests that Haya and this word is used around 3,500 plus time. It is not only used in the Hebraic definitive, but also uh, in the Aramaic. I want to read this historical connotation of the word. Often, quote, often this verb 
indicates more than simple existence or identity. It means more than the moon exists or we can identify with the moon. Hear this carefully. Quote, rather, rather, the implication of this verb makes a strong statement. The implication of the verb haya, it makes a strong statement about the being or the presence or ponim, the face of. It is face to face. And Yah spoke to Moshe face to face. Ponim. We see the ponim of the moon. We see the, and our face, uh, uh, the moon is seen by our ponim. This is the essence of the words Chaya. It is more than just existence to come to be, but it's, uh, it's, it's strongest implication. Uh, it is about the being or presence, presence of a person or a thing. It has to be visible. For something to be present, it has to be visible. It is that our language is construed, Yisraya. And there are many that if you ask people the definitive of a word, they don't know. There is one simple word I will ask you that will listen to this lesson. Uh, I often, people will say, hey guy or guys, and I will immediately rebuke that. I will not allow anyone to call me a guy. Or my isha and I, when we are together, guys. I won't allow that. Because if they don't even know the, uh, the origin of the word, why it was created, it has become a part of our vernacular. And we say to Yisraya, guy, you guys. Well, the word, its meaning, what it derives from, its etymology, it is a fool, a simpleton, a dunce, a jackass of a simpleton. Well, I don't mean it that way, but regardless, that was the creation of the word. You can imply or deduct anything you want to, uh, but it still means uh, when you call someone or use it as a noun to call me uh, a guy, uh, you call me a jackass of a simpleton, uh, whether you use it as an adverb or a verb. I'm not a rope. And yet we take things like that, we utilize it, and we think that it's proper. And when we see words of the Torah, we don't have the ability because we're lazy and shiftless, uh, a little sleep, a little falling of hand, that poverty comes. That's why we're poor spiritually. And that's why we cannot eat the strong meat when someone speaks unto us uh, with viability uh, and validity of what uh, the Torah is speaking. The word Haya. And when the month, the Chodash, had come, the Chodash, had Haya appeared. The presence. You're in the face of it. That we knew that it was the season of Yom. The word Haya, again, I want to emphasize this greatly. Rather, the verb makes a strong statement about the being or presence, and presence is spawning face to face, of a person or thing. Is the moon a thing? It's not in our vernacular a noun is a person, place, or thing. Is that not what a noun is? And yet this is a verb that tells us that the noun of the thing, it has come and has appeared. Quote, yet the simple meaning become or come to pass appear often in the English versions. In the versions of the English vernacular, that is how it is defined. And so once we think we understand the definitive of it, then that is what stunts us and we don't go any farther. I want to show us some of the demonstrations of the word Haya. That we may get a clearer understanding of its definitive and what it means. We must be able to determine the proper time and season of Yas Mo'ad is Mo'adam. We must be able to do that, Yisraya. And if we don't do that, then woe unto us. We must have those that have the ability 
to uh, to teach us those things um, that uh, that uh, we must understand. I want to give us a, a prime example of one thing that uh, that appeared during the time of Yoshua. It was one thing that what the wise men did, uh, those that were understanding of the time and the season. They began to search after Hamashiach when they saw the Uth, the sign. The sign of what? The stars. They had Ra'ah, they had looked, they had appeared upon it. They had seen that, they saw that. And so they came when they saw the star in the east. It was the star of prophecy. When they saw it, it was not invisible. And that was the sign of the season that they proceed. And they seek out this one that was the sign unto Yisrael. Wasn't that so, Yisrael? Let us draw our attention to Bereshit, Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. It says here of Chava and Adum, And when they heard the call, the voice of Yah walking in the garden, in the Ruach, or in the spirit of the day, and Adom and his Isha, did they hide themselves? It says they hid themselves. Did not Dawi hide himself? He hid himself in the field, didn't he? Did not Adom and Shiva Hava hide themselves? They hid themselves from the Pony, the presence of Yah among the trees of the garden. That is what the word Haya represents. It is the presence, it is the face-to-face -face, uh, visibility of one another. You must come and face-to-face with the Chodash, with the Yah Re'ach, the moon, to understand the signs of Yah. So they hid themselves from the presence of Yah. From Yah's presence, they hid themselves from Almighty Yah. And we cannot understand the, the, the emphasis of the word Chaya until we understand what it implies, Yisraya, as it appears. As I read the definitive of the word Chaya. Can I do that again? Because I want you to understand the attributes of this word. Just a little apposite here. For the refreshing of my throat. The words Haya, I want it to examine some of the main attributes of this word. Haya, to arise, to appear. The word appear in the Arabic or the Hebraic, uh, it is Ra'a. 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 And the word Ra'a is to be seen, to be able to see, uh, to be visible, to see, to cause to look intently at, behold, cause to gaze at. So in order for something to appear, we must gaze at it. Is that not one of the main attributes of the word Haya? Haya, to rise, to appear, to come about, and to come to pass. Is that not one of the main attributes or one of the ingredients of the word Haya? We understand the word appear. I won't examine that for a moment. The word appear in the Hebrew, it is, it is Ra'a. Ra'a, it is to be seen. To be seen of, to be visible, to see, to cause to look intently at, to behold, and to cause to gaze at. Hallelujah. Let us look at this word, Ponim, the presence of it. I want us to look at this for a moment in the book of Bimit, bar Numbers 2026. 20, it says, And Moshe and Aharon went from the Paul name, the presence of the assembly, to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their Paul name, their face, and the splendor of Yah appeared. The word appeared. So if Yah appeared, if the if the Chodesh, the Chodesh appeared, did Yah appear before them? And if we know that the word appeared, it is ra'a, uh, ra'a. It is to be seen, to visibly see, to look upon intently, 
In order for the moon to ra'ah, it must appear, and it is according uh, to Shirak's writing, uh, that the waning or the slither of the moon, uh, it has appeared, and we know the season and the time. You cannot understand the, the broad depth of Torah out of one or two verses, Yisra'ya. You must understand the, the words and the words, uh, the words that brings the summation of the matter, that each word is vital uh, to the opening of our wisdom and our understanding to the whole of the matter. You cannot just take one word and understand the matter. If someone says, come, come what? You don't understand. If someone just walk up to you and say, no, no. What does that imply? No, what? If someone walks up to you and say, no, you cannot buy that. So you know what you're trying to buy. You know what you want. You understand that there, you cannot buy it. So that's the way it is. We can't look at one word and think we have defined the matter in its completion. No, it's not so. Again, here in the book of Divarin, Durramini 5.4, the covenant Yah gave uh, unto Yisra'ya at Choreb, it says, Yahweh talk with you, Yisra'ya, face spawning to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. Yahweh talks to you, Yisra'ya, face to face, Paulim, and that is what the moon does. It speaks to us. That's why Yah gave it to be a sign. We must understand that. And it is not when it is hidden. Yoshua said, and light has come into the world. He was a light. He was hidden. He was hidden from the eyes of many until the light of that excellent shine forth. And then they knew that this was the son of Yah. He was in a dark world. Until that light began to flow from, it began to ebb from that Fragile body that was beaten and broken, but yet not broken. He spoke to them. He ra'a face to face. So the moon must appear. In order for it to appear, it must ra'a. It must be a facial. It must be seen. You must know. You must look upon it intently. You must gaze upon it. Let us uh, proceed from here. Yoshua. Ezekiah. This is what it says in Ezekiah, chapter 20, verse 34. Yah says, And I will bring you out from the people, and I will gather you out of the countries, the places where I have coots of boots, I've scattered you. Yah says, With a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm, with fury, with my chema, pour out, will I rule over you. Look at this though. This is the catalyst. Yah says, and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Yah says, there will I show fast. I will plead. I will govern you. I will rule over you. I will vindicate you. I will judge you. And I will punish you, Yisrael. He said, I will do it with you, Ponim, face to face. Face to face. I will appear before you. I will rule over you in that capacity, and I will do it face to face. So if something has appeared, it must be visible, Yisra'ya. We cannot negate that. The Shirak says, and with the moon also, it serves, the moon is made also to serve in its season, to mark the time, and to be an everlasting sign. From the moon comes, from the moon comes, or Chaya. That's where the word comes, Chaya. From the moon comes the sign of the feast day, a light that wanes when it reaches the full moon. And I've demonstrated that to you in the drawings of the different phases of the moon. What is a waning moon? It is after what we call the full moon. It is to identify that the moon is full. When it wanes, that it is full. It is full whether it's waning or not, but, but the waning is a sign to us. May I proceed? This is a very dynamic, powerful teaching that I will not conclude today, but I will give us sufficient information that I will conclude it in a later time. But I want to proceed a little further. I know that we understand that there are those that do not uh, uh, 
realize the validity of the, the more damn the feast days are young. And I really do not want to take that path today and teach on the validity of the feast days. That is something that I want to speak on at a latter time, yes, Raya. I don't want to spend much of the day on that or this time teaching. But I do want to speak on those things as to uh, Haya, how we know when it is the season and a time, it is a memoria, and how we can determine the Hach, the feast day of Omani Yah, that we are, we are bound to observe and to keep them. And I know that I keep emphasizing some of the same things, but we must do that in order to drive the value of that uh, into the bosom of Yisrael. Again, I want to revisit because it is vitally important. You will not understand unless uh, uh, unless uh, it is it, it is uh, it, it is impressed upon you that you understand this. You will not understand. As I said in the book of Tehillim, again, again, there are many that utilize this Psalms eighty one three to establish their doctrine as that there is no need for the visibility of the moon, and that's not so. That we said, I want you to blow, to tacha. I want you to tacha, to blow the shofar. He tells us in the Chodesh, in the Chodesh, the first day of the month, in the fullness. How does one know that it is the fullness? How does one know it is the fullness of the moon? He said, of the appointed time of Arafis, of Arachah, it is a statue forever unto Yisrael. The account that is most visible, the account in 1st Shamu'el 2024, that we gives us a profound, descriptive detail of knowledge as to know when to blow the shofar. First Shamuel 2024, it tells us that David hid himself. He concealed himself in the Sadith, in the field, in the opening, whereby the stars are visible, just like the wise men when they sought the sign of the coming of Yeshua HaMashiach, they were not uh, with the sheep in the midst of the, uh, of the tree area, they were in the field, in the wilderness, where it was barren. There was grass, but there were no trees, Yisrael. And that is what a field is. It is not a wooded area. He was in the field for what? And when? And when the Chodash, and this, even if you really, truly search out the Hebraic definitive of the word Chodash, it would be defined as uh, the full or the full moon uh, is when uh, the day in which the crescent of the moon reappeared. That is what it is. It is not when the crescent has not appeared. And when the new moon was come, the king sat down, Shaul, he sat together with his host of those, uh, he sat down, and so the Daewid, he sat down uh, to enjoy the beauty of the sign that he knew that Yah was on his side, he was present by him. He said, when the moon was higher, when it was come, when it had appeared, when it had come about, when it occurred, when it was seen to be in existence. When he saw that, Yisrael, he knew that it was uh, the season. He knew that. And there was no doubt about it. And there are those that want to debate. There is no debating. He cannot, he could not write what was written in Tehillim with full understanding Unless he had experience, why was he in the field? Why is this important that when the Chodesh, the new moon, had come? Why was that vital? It had Haya. Haya again. It is used some 3,500 plus times in the Tanakh 
and the Torah, and the writings of the Navi, M, and the books of uh, writings. I want to read this historical fact on this word. Quote, I will try not to inject, quote, Tanakh, a test, Chaya, about 3,560 times in both the Hebraic and the Aramaic tongue. Often, this verb indicates more. Unquote. I must inject. Often. Often this verb indicate more times, more, than simply existence or identity. It means more than that, Yisraya. We want to say we know the moon exists. Sure it exists. Sure there's an identity to the moon. But what is the oath, the sign that God gives unto us that we know that uh, it is a sure and a certain sign? This quote, rather, rather, I know that you think and you're understanding that it means this to exist or identity. But the conclusion of the matter, rather the verb, uh, makes a strong, a viable statement about, it is about the being. What is being? It is in one's presence. The being or presence of a person or a thing. There must be a presence. And if there is a presence of a thing or a being of a thing or a person, uh, it is visible to the eyes of the beholder. So the implication is far greater than what is being emphasized today. The strong statement is about the presence of a person or thing. Yet, yet now, the simple meaning become or come to pass appear often in the English versions in the English deduction, whereby there are times that it applies appear, or ra'ah, ra'ah, to appear, to be seen, to be visible, to look upon intently, it means that. And unless we are going to spend the time to define words, and that's the way I do it, I am just that ignorant. I look at each word that I read in the Torah, you may think that you understand the meaning, but you really don't, Yisraeah. That we was not the only one that spoke of this incident. There was one mighty, his name was Shirach. I want to emphasize this again. Shirach 43 verse 6. <clears throat> Profound wisdom utters unto us, it speaks. It says, uh, Shirat 43, verse 6, Yahweh made the Yare at the moon also to serve in its seasons, uh, its Moed, uh, the appointed time, the appointed place, uh, the place, uh, the meeting place. That's what a Moed is. Uh. Yahweh made the moon also to serve in its season, to mark the time, uh, and to be an everlasting uh, a sign, an oath, an oath, an everlasting sign. Shirach goes on to instruct us in verse 7, a Shirach 43, 7. From the Yareach, from the moon, comes the sign for the feast days. What is the sign? He tells us a light that wanes when it reaches the full. Look at the light. Do we see the chart of the moon? We see the new moon, the new moon, and the full moon. It's not visible. The new moon and the full moon. The new moon is full of light. And the full moon, there is no light. And Shirak talks about a light that wanes. When does the light wanes? During the full moon stage. During the full moon stage is when the light wanes. 
He said, like that wanes when it reaches the full. You will know it has reached, it has climaxed to the full when the light wanes. And that is what thy weed waited for. It is a fact. It is the truth. And you cannot add anything or deduct anything from that but that simple analogy uh, that is expressed by the volume of the words uh, of Shirak. You know what the waning is? It's when the moon began to, to decrease in size or its extent of the actions. It began to diminish or the edge of the corner. It began to de deflect the characters, character, character, characterize the fullness of what is present. So that's why we need the waning, that little slither. That's what we call the waning, that the slither must appear. And from that time, from this slither, you began to count Easter right now. That is when. May I read that again? We will have this up on YouTube for your ability to see our website. We want you to examine what I am teaching in this. There is a tremendous amount of more information. I wanted to get this up immediately. Yeah? So those that are struggling with this season, they will have some concrete wisdom of this matter. Again, Shirak says, Shirak 43, 7, For from the moon, the Yareach, comes the sign of the feast days, a light that wanes when it reaches the full. A light that wanes. Was that what Dawid saw as he sat in the field, the waning of the light Yisra'yah? Is that what he saw when he said that when the month was come, when the new moon was Chaya, and the word Chaya is determined more than just to come. It is to be in existence, to appear. And when something has appeared, it is visible, you can see it, there is a reliability to it, because it is in your presence, Yisraya. You know it is there. It has come to pass. It is in one's presence. It is a it is a ra'a, and ra'a is to look at. It is to inspect. It is to perceive, to observe, cause to be seen or to see, to look at one another's face, to gaze upon. That is what the word means, Yisra'ya. And we cannot deny that. How do we determine the Mo'adim, the Mo'ad of Yam? We began in the month of Abib, in Yah's beginning of his year, when we see that slither of the moon. We began there. And we began to count. And we can determine all things that way. It is, Yah has not given us something that is not easily to be uh, to be recognized. What do you say to those that uh, uh, that uh, that have no ability, no understanding? How do you put that weight upon one uh, and do not teach them and show them according to the Torah that Yah is talking about the dark side of the moon? It's not found in the Torah. It's not found in the writings of the historical writings of, of those. It's not found there at all. That's why it's important that Yah raises up the prophet, the messengers the true messenger, that they may expound in the depths of these matters that we as Yisra'yah may be ekot. So you wait for that waning as Shirach says. The moon is set there for the time and the season of the feast days of Yah. And when you see the waning of that moon, Yisra'yah, you know as Dawid saw that as he sat in the field, that's what he saw. Let no one beguile you. Don't even let me do that. That is what he determined. There will be more teachings on this from myself and Arreach, teaching on the time and the season as we prepare for that. This is a simple teaching to prepare us as we're getting ready for the season of Yah that is drawing near, of the beginning of his new year, and the time of the season of his Mu'adim. Tentatively, Yisra'ya, as I have searched the dockets, and I do search uh, the astrology of the moon and things of that nature. I'm not one that do it for any other persons to understand the timing 
of the appearing of the moon. And what I have deducted from my research as I utilize my lunar calendar, and if you look behind me, you will see my lunar calendar. I order them every year, and as I have over the years, and I have with time, as we have looked for the appearing of the slither of the new moon, of the waning of the moon, I find them to be very precise, very precise. And so with that said, I want you to understand that the beginning of Yaz Mo'adem, tentatively, and we will place this on the website for you to see, that uh, Pesach will begin on the evening of April 5th. We will, hell, we will begin, we will hold the Pesach and Matzvah begins when the sun goes down. So Pesach begins at that eve as the sun begins to go down, as the sun goes down. In essence, it will be held on the eve of the 5th of uh, April, which will be, in our language, it will be a Thursday evening. And what a great event and time we shall gather here in Teshua. For Yisrael, you invited to come and be with us for this great celebration of this wonderful Mo'ad as we shall celebrate and dance. That's what the words Mo'ad is, Hach, feast days. It is celebration, it is dancing, it is singing, it is fellowship. And that's what we plan to do. We will fellowship and enjoy one another. We will gather here in Teshua community. I want to inject that again or re-inject that from my determination, we will wait to see the appearing of the slither of the moon, as Shirach and Daiweed, the messengers of Yah. And at that time, we will know precisely as we get close to the date. But I believe that you can mark this date on your calendar, beginning on the 5th of April, beginning at sundown. We will begin the more at of Yah. Actually, the sixth, but we will begin on the eve of the fifth. We began that for the more at of Pesach. We look for you to be with us on this great occasion, this great fellowship, this excited time. We know it shall be a great time and a beautiful time. So join us, Yisraya. We will post all this on the website, and also we will. Uh, have this video free for you to download, to look at, that it may be a great assistance to you as you desire to determine the time of your season. From us here at Teshua community, Uma Teshua, we say to call Yisraya, Yabrach, and have a great Moad in your Shur. Shabbat Shalom.